Hello and welcome to the second ever Prepare with Bear. That's right, this is a cooking stream. I'm throwing the Bear Cave, the Lego, the Scythe emote in the chat. Instead of the old Build-A-Bear workshop or a regular Wednesday where I play Hearthstone or whatever, I'm doing some cooking. Uh, thank you to uh, Harold, uh, who is hosting the stream. Appreciate that. Lord Crescent says, hey, Pat. The T says, I, uh, oh, Ristavan's here. Hi, Ristavan. The T says, uh, I was originally going to tune in just to see a nice cooking stream. Then I saw the food being prepared was, and now I'm watching just to be terrified. I don't know what's so terrifying. I'll talk about the menu in a second as we welcome more of our friends. Julie Cooley's here. Q Cubed is here. Bobby Dice Roller is here. What's up, Bobby? Thank you very much for being here. Um... Uh, and Ash is here. Make sure you've got your regular gunpla tools. Very important for cooking, indeed. Um, I don't have that, that is in the other room, the normal build space. We're here in the kitchen, as you can tell by the things around me. Uh, to, uh, Cal Unit says, is it famous or infamous? Let's get cookie, says Xenalon. Xenalon, it's been a hot minute. Welcome. Happy to have you here. Um, so yeah, the menu, as you can see by the title of the stream, for those watching uh, the stream live, what's up YouTube, if you're watching this after the fact, um, the title is uh, Making Pat's Famous Meatloaf and Peanut Butter Bites. That's right. I called them bites because it's fine to write it down, but saying out loud peanut butter balls is just a thing I didn't want to say like several times during the stream. I'm going to say it one more time, peanut butter balls. But I'm not going to say it again. I'm going to say peanut butter bites from now on. And my famous meatloaf, only so much as that I've taken photos of this meatloaf before and posted it on the internet about check out the meatloaf I made. And people have replied about that meatloaf. And so it's famous. It's not fame. It's not well known. But oh, uh, Last Brook just subscribed. Um, uh, uh, Lex Luthor stole 40 cakes and that's terrible. Wait, that's not what you're making, is it? No. Uh, peanut butter meatloaf doesn't sound too bad. Yeah, that's the thing. I am not making peanut butter or or someone read it as meatloaf with peanuts, and I'm not doing that either. Um, one recipe or two. Oh, wait, says the T. Uh, I thought it was one thing. No, I'm making my famous meatloaf and also. Okay, so this is, this is where the issue came in. Great. We're going to make that. Uh, Pat's making, uh, making Pat's famous meatloaf and also... peanut butter bites. I am not making meatloaf and peanut butter bites. I apologize for people not understanding that. That's on me. Uh, but that last brook. Oh, oh uh, sorry. I didn't do the applause. I do have uh, I do have my sound thing here, so we'll do that. Uh, so we're here. Thank you very much for renewing your subscription. Uh, 40 months. Uh, 40 months is a long damn time. So thank you so much for that. I appreciate it very, very much, my friend. Um, Peanut butter meatloaf doesn't sound too bad. Ah, English is terrible. I read it as meatballs, so I have good reading comprehension. It's true. English is janky. It is distressing. Welcome. Um, uh, but yeah, uh, so we're doing two separate things, so don't worry about it. Now, um, uh, in order to do this as a stream, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do my prep for my meatloaf, um, which I'm excited to do. Do some prep work for that. Get it in the oven, get it cooking, and then while it's cooking, we'll tackle the peanut butter bites. Now, the important thing to say about these peanut butter bites is they are a no-bake, so they do require refrigeration. And I have had uh, the mixture, which I'll go over the exact uh, uh, ratio, which is peanut butter and chocolate chips. I have had that mixed up in a bowl sitting uh, covered in my fridge for about 45 minutes. But half an hour is all you really need. But I put them in early because I had the time to do it. So that's a step that I have chosen to do before the stream started. I would like to do everything during the stream. But what I didn't want to do was have it right here and then just put it in the fridge for half an hour. That didn't seem like it made any sense. So because all it was was putting two ingredients together and mixing it with a spoon, and then putting in the refrigerator. I did that ahead of time. So I'm going to say that right now. Uh, very sad we're not getting a peanut butter sculpture of artist, actor, and Republican disaster human meatloaf. We're also not getting that. No. Uh, I, I won't do that. Uh, okay, so I'm going to turn on my iPad, which has my recipes written down, uh, typed out. I will go over 
uh, everything we need as we go. I will talk about substitutions that I have made, which you could make. Uh, I'll tell you about what originally the recipe called for and what I'm using instead, because, uh, you know, uh, PB meatloaf be more of a fudge or a cake. I think you'd have to make it a cake because you would want like, you would want like, um, like uh, cake mix in there or brownie to give that the like meat loaf -ness of it, I think you'd have to. Although you could do a fudge in a loaf. Uh, all right, so we're going to get into cooking. I got to retweet. I got to retweet my tweet. Uh, let the people know that we're starting uh, because we are going to start with um, uh, some, some fun knife skills. First things first, I am going to preheat the oven. Uh, I'm going to preheat the oven to... Uh, 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, and we'll get that going. Make sure that's starting. Takes a second. Yes, the oven is now preheating. Sorry, Pat. Uh, I clipped this for prosperity. Many apologies. This is too funny. Uh, Zenalon, I, I can't see the clip there because uh, I have um, basically only VIPs and moderators can put links in there. But if you clip something... Uh, from my channel, I will be able to grab it because I will go and review clips later. Uh, I do that. I trust y'all, but I also don't like a bunch of links showing up in chat. Um, but if you clipped it, uh, uh, then I will check that out later. And you do not have to apologize. Uh, it was probably me saying peanut butter, not bites, right? Uh, okay, so overhead camera, overhead camera, um, overhead camera, overhead camera. Great. Onion. We're going to be doing some onion uh, slicing and dicing. That is part of our recipe here. Um, I will uh, get this going here. Now, uh, under no problem at all. Now, uh, let's go and get our... Ooh, actually, we want to move this out of the way. And actually, weirdly enough, inverse of our first stream two weeks ago, our first cooking stream, we don't want to use a small paring knife. This small paring knife is fine, but nothing says kitchen counter like a computer mouse. T gets it. Um... We actually cut our, our onion. Here's the thing about a paring knife like this, a preparing knife. It's not as sharp as you would like. Now, this is actually pretty sharp, but your bigger knives, your chef knives, your butcher knives, those knives are actually going to be your sharpest knives because you use them the least. So we're going to do that for an onion. We are actually going to use a big old blade. We're not going to use a centauri, but we're going to use a chef's knife here. Because uh, you do have a little more control, especially with the rocking motion. Now, I am not an expert by any means. And please, please take all precautions in the world when preparing onions or dicing any kind of vegetable like this. Especially because we will be doing the thing where I am going to be making some slices throughout this onion. Uh, we only need a half cup of onion, which is why I'm choosing to do only a small portion. Uh, my goal is to do a couple cuts this way. Uh, just like two cuts this way, then we will turn it and then I will do cuts this way using my knuckle as a guide using the claw method going across. Then we will turn it again and we will chop, 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 chop uh, using our pinky and our thumb to kind of press the onion pieces together, which will hopefully keep its consistency. I am, as I said, no expert. And if I fuck up, I fuck up. And uh, sorry. Uh, I did chop up the rest of this onion beforehand to practice because it has been a hot minute. So, so we're going to take our knife here. We're going to pick a spot like this. We'll go kind of through. We're not going to go all the way to the root. We'll go most of the way. And we're going to do one more cut just across. That actually worked out all right. And I appreciate the happy with that. Okay, so we're going to go like this. And then we're just going to be, we're going to be kind of slicing towards. We're going to go around like this. Do, 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 do. So we will kind of go through, just go through, trying not to hit the roots, trying to keep this together if we can. And we'll do like that, and we'll do like that, and that, and that. Okay, and now we'll turn it again, and we will try to pinch with our thumb and our index, or our pinky finger here, and we will use the claw method uh, and it's so that our knuckle is kind of this knuckle right here is kind of a guide. Uh, and we're just going to do some nice rocking chops. Kind of use the front of the blade here. We want to use that. And we're getting a nice dice. Oh, can smell that onion, that chopped onion. 
And again, move our fingers there. Uh, this is a, a sharp knife. I have cleaned the surface here, so we are going to go off of this. Um, now, you may have remembered that I have a sharper, uh, not sharper, I have a bigger cutting board, but we're going to be using that for our peanut butter bites. So instead, I am doing this here. Uh, all right, and rock and chop here. And then when you get to the end here, you can just kind of say whatever or okay with that. Or if you want, you can go like this and go like that and throw this into your trash pile, which I have a bowl off screen. Uh, question for the chat and Pat, is peanut butter count as a sauce? Peanut butter, I th yeah, you could count. P peanut butter is a condiment, I guess. You could say it's a condiment. Uh, all right, so uh, we're gonna just go here and just give it a nice chop as we go. I'm not doing a dice method here. I'm not dicing these in finely thin. I'm not, I should say, I'm not mincing this. I do not mind if I get a couple good bites of, of uh, onion. It is going to break down here in our baking process. I'm not terribly worried about it. We also only need a half cup, so I'm not worried about that either. Uh, and the only other thing I will say is, uh, and this is a nice little trick I can uh, convey to you, is you want to use the back of your blade, not the sharp edge of your blade, while doing this method. There we go, because you will scrape your knife against the uh, the sharp edge of the knife against the cutting board, and you will dull the blade. And that is a tip. That might be the only actual useful tip I will give tonight. But if I can impart one piece of information, I'm feeling pretty good. And if that's the piece of information I can give you, hell yeah, I am happy to give that piece of information. You're never going to get all in one go. Don't worry about getting it all in one go. Just get out whatever you can. Make sure you don't cut up your hand while your thumb while you are pulling things there. If you're finding some large pieces as you go, chop that up. Uh, large uh, Lord Crashington says, in case you're curious about what new pop culture characters are in Fortnite, Chun-Li and Ryu are there now, along with the Flash, the CW Flash, and uh, Ellen Ripley, the next tease character. Okay. Thank you for the Fortnite update. Uh, peanut butter as a sauce is called a mole. Uh, I do the same technique when scooping up vegetables. Nice. Yeah. Okay. So this ended up being a little bit more than a half a cup, which is fine. We're going to put that aside. Uh, I am going to uh, kind of just scoop up what's left here. I will take care of this later. And we will put that aside as I get... One pound of ground beef. This is 90%. Uh, this is a 90-10 instead of an 80-20. I went with a 90-10. Do whatever you want. Do a 70-30 if you got to. Who cares? You're baking it in an oven. And you're putting a bunch of stuff in here. Uh, I, uh, I mean, people got to make money. I'm not, I'm not here to say that people don't got to license their properties to make that money. I'm, I'm, that's not my thing. Uh... Okay, so let me talk through the recipe here. We are still uh, going through everything here. Uh, one pound of ground beef we have right here. We will be adding a bunch of things to it, and I, we will add them as I say what they are. Uh, and I will give you any information outside of what this is uh, if we need to. I do our crossovers. Um, we're going to put three quarters of a cup of breadcrumbs. Now, you could use panko. I don't have panko. This is Italian breadcrumbs, so it's got Italian like seasoning in it, which means that the Italian seasoning I'm putting later, I'm putting less in than well. I'll tell you that, that, because this is not just plain breadcrumbs. It does have Italian seasoning in it already, so I'm not using all the Italian seasoning that I would normally use. So you can see that there. That's what the, all the color is. So we're going to put in all our breadcrumbs here, put in all our breadcrumbs. Uh, we also have uh, three uh, quarters of a cup of ketchup but we're dividing that ketchup into a half cup and a quarter cup. So we're going to take our half cup of ketchup, which I have here. Here's our half cup of ketchup. Uh, we will be adding all our ketchup in. And we, we don't have to worry about wait, you know, mixing dry together, mixing the wet together. We're just putting everything in because it's fine. That's totally okay. Uh, that was three quarters of a cup of breadcrumbs. It, here's the thing about breadcrumbs. They are tiny. These breadcrumbs are very small. I, I know it looks like a lot, but that was not a lot. 
any particular ketchup brand. Uh, I'm just using whatever. This is what I had. This is the, you know, the ketchup that was in the fridge. You can use what you want. If you want to use fancy ketchup, you can use fancy ketchup. I am using just like the Food Lion or Kroger brand, whichever I had in the fridge. Um, okay, we are going to add half a cup of Parmesan cheese. Here is half a cup of Parmesan cheese. This is, you may recognize this cheese as grated Parmesan from the from uh, two weeks ago when we made uh, my homemade mac and cheese. This is the leftover that I grated myself. But I did it ahead of time instead of doing it during the stream. Doing it during the stream, I should say. So I had a half cup of Parmesan cheese. We are going to add in, uh, okay, our half cup of diced onions. Here's our half cup of diced onions. Diced onions are now in the effect. Uh, I don't normally like meatloaf, but I feel like I'm liking this. Well, I, you know, I'm putting stuff in that I think is good. So hopefully you'll enjoy it. Um, okay, so one large egg. I don't have any eggs in the house because I use egg beaters. So one quarter of a cup of egg beaters is the equivalent of one egg. So I'm adding that in here. As I said, if I had a large egg, I would throw in a large egg, but I don't. So I'm using one quarter of a cup because a quarter of a cup is about one large egg. Uh, that's, so I'm just letting you know, uh, we are making additions, we are making subtractions. Uh, all right, so again, uh, a, a, a substitution. We are going to be putting in one tablespoon of steak sauce. Would I want this to be Worcestershire sauce? Of course I would. Do we have Worcestershire sauce in this house? We don't. So I'm using A1 steak sauce because because uh, that's what we have. So we're going to be putting that in, and it's going to be fine. It's just going to add a. Uh, it's going to add some flavor to our dish that Worcestershire would have. It's not Worcestershire sauce which is fun to say, and, and I'm not great at it, Worcestershire, sir, but we're going to put that in there. Egg serves as glue here, uh, really. Yes, indeed. Okay, so we're putting that in. Now, we are going to be putting in, ah, one teaspoon jarred minced garlic. Now, I know that you probably don't have a jar in your fridge, a jar of minced garlic. You could use fresh garlic. If you're going to use fresh garlic, you should use uh, two teaspoons of fresh garlic. Because uh, this garlic that I am going to be adding here, along with some other things, I'll talk about this. This garlic right here is incredibly strong and potent. So I have the, the normal amount of fresh garlic to this because this is going to be, I, I might not even need one full teaspoon. I maybe should have cut back some, but I didn't. Uh, we also have uh, one teaspoon Italian seasoning, but I cut back on some of that because there is some Italian seasoning in the breadcrumbs. Uh, we have three-fourths a teaspoon of pepper, eyeball it. A half a teaspoon of salt, again, eyeball it, maybe a little bit more because I do like salt and some stuff. Uh, you need Danny O'Dwyer to help you with UK names like that, I'm sure. And um, this is the last that's going to go in here, and there is one other ingredient, but we won't worry about that until we are done... Uh, getting this together and putting it in our loaf pan. So we're going to put the, all this in here. We're going to get this all in. Got to get all that good stuff in. Um, and while I mix this, I will let you know what the final ingredient is in our meatloaf, which is, uh, you may remember that I said that uh, some of the ketchup we're holding off to the side. Well, that ketchup and diced bacon are going to go on top of our meatloaf. When our meatloaf is, when our when our loaf is loafed, we will put, we will spread ketchup and that diced bacon on top. Right now, I have that set aside with the bacon. Um, uh, so we're going to start by using our spoon. I might use my hands. I haven't decided if I'm going to use my hands. I I don't know. I I have the spoon to do this because I just didn't know if that was going to be something I did. We might have to get in there with our hands, but then I got to clean up and it's, 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 it's a whole thing. So I think I'm going to use my spoon. Like I'm still going to have to wipe my hands like, but I'm going to see how this looks as I incorporate everything together. Uh, if I've got to get in with my hands there, uh, did you create this recipe, Pat? So, uh, this recipe is, um, originally started on 
probably from a website that I read, I would say probably 10 years ago. Uh, and it has had many additions. Uh, this did not have bacon on top, but I like bacon, so I put bacon on top. Uh, one day, I decided when making this, I decided that it needed uh, uh, Worcestershire sauce, which I had. And I had Worcestershire sauce, so I'm going to put this in. Um, it had way more ketchup in the original recipe than this does. And I felt I didn't need it as much because I was adding other things. Uh, garlic. Originally, this was garlic powder. And I was like, well, I'm going to use fresh garlic. And now I'm using minced uh, um, jarred garlic. So it has had, uh, it has had quality. Uh, I hate using my hands, like maybe use two spoons. Yeah. I mean, I could use my hands, but here's the thing. Then I got to go off screen and wash my hands. I don't have a camera over there. And so we're not going to worry about that. Uh, all right. Uh, we, our oven is, yeah, our oven is preheated. It is ready to go. So we're going to get a look there. This is looking good. Yeah. Um, yeah. If you want to make sure everything's incorporated, if you messed up and you got some hot, like if you got a garlicky spot, if you got an oniony spot, it's okay. It doesn't matter. Everything's going to be all right. Also, all this is going to go into a pan anyway. So we will put this aside for a second. Um, get paper towels. I have put paper towels within uh, the reach of my hands this time, which is a uh, upgrade from last stream where I was like, oh no, I have no way of cleaning my hands. Because uh, I also are, here's the thing. We didn't use our hands for that. I'm going to use my hands for another thing and uh, I'm going to do something else that's going to get messy. So let's get our dish out here. Uh, this is going to be our pan, and it might look small, but everything's going to fit in. And then you're also seeing, hey, you have this uh, cookie sheet here as well. And that is only because this is going to this is going to go in here, and it's going to rise above it. It's going to go over it. And we're going to be putting ketchup and uh, bacon on top of it. And this is to protect. This is to protect spillage. So it doesn't hit the bottom of our oven. It hits this pan. Because this is my parents' kitchen, and they are in Florida, and I am not in Florida. I am here, and I would love to not have to run the self-cleaning oven while I'm here. That would be, woo, great. Uh, so uh, we are going to grease this to make things easier for our uh, our meatloaf to come out of out of this uh, after the fact. I am using butter. You can use cooking spray if you want. You can use vegetable oil if you want. I've got real butter, so I'm going to use real butter. Uh, so we're just going to hit this here and just rub it all over there. Get it all nice and greasy. Try to get in the corners. I have a, a good amount of butter that I bought for doing the mac and cheese. And I don't use a lot of butter in my regular life. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to use butter for this. And we're just hitting it all with there. And that's fine. Uh, and that's all we need to do that. And then we'll just put this back in the paper and put it aside. And we did, did we get, did we get butter on our hands? Of course we did. Oh, uh, hey, e -Rock Appel is now following. Hey, Eric, welcome. Thanks for the follow, buddy. Um, we've been doing some food prep of our meatloaf, and we're about to uh, move our meatloaf from our bowl into uh, our uh, serving, or I should say our baking dish here. Uh, but yeah, welcome, welcome, e -Rock. Throw that over there. And yeah, okay. Uh... So we're going to transfer now. We still have uh, the ketchup and diced bacon to put on top of this. Uh, but we'll just get in there and we're going to pack this in. And that there. And do, 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 do. the nice thing about doing this at 350 uh, for longer is that the uh, oven is already ready for us. Uh, it is ready to go as soon as we want to get it in there, which is awesome. And just get that in there. The last of this, mix it together. If you get to the bottom of the bowl and you still have some ingredients, you can see, you can kind of give it a little bit of a mix before you apply it. That's gonna be a, there's gonna be a garlicky spot in this. And yeah, we'll just get everything in together. As you can see, it all kind of sticks in there just fine. We're not going towards the top because we're only doing one pound. If I was going to do more, if I was doubling this recipe. Uh, okay, so if you wanted to, 
uh, you're watching this later on YouTube or you went and ch checked out the YouTube archive to see the description of everything where I list uh, the instructions and all that. If you wanted to scale this up, you obviously, you do that with the beef. The things that you think would be overpowering, don't double up. Maybe do uh, one and a half eggs instead of two eggs, but two eggs should be fine. Don't do like double the amount of garlic. Do like a half of, the, like one and a half. Uh, start with a tablespoon of, Worc of Worcestershire or steak sauce and go like, eh, we'll add another one. Like, um, it is not, the, the math doesn't necessarily work out the way you would like it to uh, or the way you think it will. So just be, be aware of that when you are do, doing stuff with that. Also, when you have a recipe, when you take a recipe, you're going to cut it in half. Be careful about taking out, a, a half, having the liquid. Sometimes you don't want to liquid, you don't want to cut the liquid in half. Um, I was already thinking about doubling the cheese. Oh, yeah, you could double the cheese. You could do a whole cup of Parmesan in here. Or you could do cheddar cheese, and you could put cheddar cheese on top instead of the bacon. Uh, obviously, there's no vegan version of this or vegetarian, but there are ways to get around if you don't want to have lactose involved. Uh, certainly, certainly cut that out if you don't want that. All right, so this is going to be our ketchup and our uh, bacon, and we're just going to be putting that on top. And we're just going to spread that out. That was our leftover bacon, or our, it's our leftover ketchup from the uh, the amount original. So this is one quarter of a cup of ketchup that I had sitting in with this diced bacon. This is a bag of diced bacon that we got. They're better than bacon bits. This is real bacon that was diced up, but it wasn't bacon I cooked. Um, but this is in the house and goes great on lots of things. So it ends up in a lot of my stuff. It ends up in my eggs uh, in the morning and is ended up in quite a few recipes uh, for stuff I've done. Uh, and there we go. And looking at this, looking at how we've done here, looking at, at the size, this is a, this tells me right now, in my opinion, I want a little more ketchup on top. Uh, it's going to bake in, uh, but I'm seeing some spots here. I'd like to put a little more ketchup in, so I'm going to do that because it's my recipe and that's what I want to do. Uh, so we'll get a little bit more. Uh, this is, ooh, this is Hunt's Tomato Ketchup. They are not a sponsor. But I'm just going to add just a little bit more. Just a little bit more right over there. That's all I'm going to do. Just put a little bit more on there because I didn't I didn't like the look at the top. This is what's going to be hitting a lot of our heat. It's going to bake in anyway, and it's just going to give a lot more flavor. So we just did that. Just a little bit more. You can smell that. And there we go. So we are going to take that again. We are putting, uh, we are putting this pan in as well uh, so that if there's anything that happens... Uh, because also if you're going to use, um, depending on your ground beef, you might have a lot of grease that's going to come up at the top and you want, you want to catch that in this instead of the oven. So we're going to open our oven here. Ooh, get, let that heat come out. Take this and we're going on the top rack here. And, uh, now, now the important thing, which I have to do here for a second is go to the intro and then I'm going to say... Hey Siri, set a timer for 45 minutes. Your timer is set for 45 minutes. My timer is set for 45 minutes, y'all. Great. So I have, uh, uh, how's the weather in South Carolina today? We have had three days in a row with low 60s temperatures, uh, which has been fantastic. And it rained a little bit yesterday, but it didn't rain at all today. And it has been great. Uh, it has been lovely. Uh, okay, so um, we now have our, our uh, meatloaf is in the oven. Uh, it is set at 350 degrees. It will be in there from 45 to 55 minutes. I have set my alarm for 45, so I can take a look at it. Uh, so, well, we have 45 minutes before we can take a look at our meatloaf. That is more than enough time to do some peanut butter balls. And I am very excited about doing these peanut butter bites. I said balls again. I want to say bites. I goofed. All right. I'm going to go in here into the fridge. We'll talk about our peanut butter bites. Take these out. And I need this. Okay. It was low 80s today, says Lashbrook. Dang, Lashbrook. Okay. Well, that's great. I am happy to hear that. Uh, that rules for you. Uh, okay. So. 
this we have the our large uh, this is my large cutting board uh, which I want to use because I want to have plenty of room for this uh, real contrast last week I'm sure last week damn that's awesome so this has been in the fridge for an hour and a half it is definitely solidified you only really need a half an hour but your your mileage may vary this is one cup of peanut butter and half a cup of uh, 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 chocolate chips. Now that is that is a great. This is a very easy, fun little thing. This is a no bake. The peanut butter bites. Uh, you just need three ingredients. We have a third ingredient coming out in just a minute or two. But I did want to say that uh, this scales really well. Um, uh, I have a combination of chunky and smooth. I would recommend just smooth, but I did not have a full cup of smooth, so I had to put some chunky in it. And that's what happens. Uh, yes, very important question. So, uh, um, um, yeah, this is Jif smooth and Jif crunchy. We are a Jif house. Uh, it's fine. You eat what you want to eat. You you do what you want to do. I would say, if I, if, if I had my druthers, this would all be smooth. I thought I had a cup left of the smooth. I did not, so I put some chunky in there. Uh, but it is nice and cold. The bowl is very cold. And now our third ingredient. Did you, did you know you can just buy these? Um, you can just buy these if you want them. You don't have to buy graham crackers and crush them yourself. You can just buy graham cracker crumbs. I don't know if you got a Kroger near you. I'm sure other people do this too. This is not something I knew about. But here we go. Graham cracker crumbs. It's great. It's just great. It's just great. It's just really fine graham crackers. So we are going to take our sur our uh, cutting surface, which is why we want to use a large one here, and we're just going to spread out graham cracker crumbs, and then we're going to be rolling balls in our hand, and then we're going to be rolling in the crumbs, and that's how we're going to get our graham cracker. Our sorry, our peanut butter bites. We'll do that, and we'll do that. Skippy for life. I understand. I get it. Um, okay, so I also need a thing to, a thing I don't have, ah, could not, could not remember where I put a bowl to put these balls in, and we'll see how this works. I haven't done this recipe actually in a while, this is a thing I did not test, I tested my meatloaf, because I've made that meatloaf about three weeks ago, so I knew that was going to be good. Uh, a thing I'm going to do that you do not have to do, but I will be doing this. Um, I am going to spray my hands with a little bit of cooking spray. Just going to give my one hand a little bit, rub them together, roll them in, and do that. Uh, so let's give myself a little bit of a spray there. This is just to make it a little easier. I mean, the, the food is cold, but it's just a, bit, a little bit so that these peanut butter does not stick in my hands. Uh, but basically, I'm going to take... Some of our some of our stuff here. I'll put that like there, maybe. Yeah, so you can see it. Yeah, here we go. Hey, there's there it is. I'm gonna take some of this into a ball and kind of give it a roll here. A roll. I'm gonna give a little more peanut butter in there. And then I'm just gonna take this and roll it in graham cracker. And theoretically, theoretically, the graham cracker is going to keep these from sticking together. But we'll put that aside there for now. And then as we go, we'll fill them out. And then we'll also start doing a layer in the bowl. Uh, and then those hopefully we won't have a problem. And then we're going to put this bowl in the fridge. This is really easy. Uh, fun for the kids. It's messy. So I don't necessarily think it's great for kids. Because uh, having kids touch a lot of peanut butter sounds like a nightmare. But uh, it's nice and easy and fun to do. And so... We'll just do that. Roll in the butter. I don't think I could make this without gloves. Well, I understand. I'm gonna. I think it's gonna be fine. Uh, these are uh, these are just um, like baking chocolate chips, uh, yeah, which is just all you need with the peanut butter. They don't have to be super sweet because they are in with the peanut butter. Um, uh, these are things you put in if you want to bake cookies, and they'll be they'll be great. You could do uh, chunks if you wanted to, um, but I like chips. That's just my, my opinion. Yes, indeed. So we're just going to hit this with this. 
kind of roll it together a little bit, cover it in graham cracker. This is very messy, and I can understand why some people would not enjoy this part of the stream. If that's if that's you, I, I apologize, and I understand if this is not great for you. But we have so much time before our meatloaf is done that I wanted something that, take, that took a little while to do. And that was, this is what I came up with. I did a snack with our entree uh, two weeks ago, and I wanted to do a dessert with this one. And this was an easy dessert to do that didn't involve, literally did not involve any ingredients I didn't already have in the house. Because, uh, if you're not aware, I am living with my folks right now. They're out of town. I do not have access to a vehicle. So uh, I'm getting all my food delivered. And uh, yeah, I have made the call uh, that I was like, well, can I do anything with what I have? And I realized, oh, I have everything I need to make peanut butter balls. So we're doing that. And I didn't have to uh, get it in there, get a roll going, a little bit of roll here. Yeah, this way I didn't have to um, get any ingredients that I didn't already have. I had to get like an onion on my last grocery delivery, and that was fine. Put those in there. Put those in there. Uh, there are some fun, fun peanut butter desserts you can make just with a microwave if you want to Google those. Uh, but there's a, yeah, there's a variety of cool uh, peanut butter fun peanut butter treats you can make at home. Uh, yeah. Get it together. Um. Yeah, I mean, most of the, look, most of the time I'm just making, uh, cooking from home, cooking for one. Like, I cooked up a sausage this afternoon and then diced it up and threw it in with some marinara sauce and uh, some pasta that I cooked yesterday because uh, this takes a while to get set up, folks. You would not be surprised to know. It takes a little while to get set up uh, to do a cooking stream like this. And then you end up with... Uh, because this is 9 p.m., starting at 9 p.m., I have to have dinner before the stream starts. So, made the call to pre-do a lot of stuff early. Uh, but yeah, I mean, most of the time cooking for myself is just like a meat, a vegetable, and, uh, you know, some kind of potato product. I did get, pretty recently in my grocery delivery, uh, curly fries because I care about myself. And I was like, oh, you know what would be great? Curly fries. So I got myself some curly fries. And I'm very excited. I'm going to need more graham crackers. Which is okay. There. And these are going to turn out great. They should not, they shouldn't stick together too much with the graham cracker. That should be a nice barrier. You could get a cookie sheet and put them all out there, really separate them. Uh... Uh, I often will do ranch with french fries, totally, uh, with curly fries. These season, seasoned curly fries definitely were calling out for ketchup, because that's great. Um, if I had put cheese on them, I certainly would also use ranch. Uh, and I have all that diced bacon. I could put that on curly fries, too. Why not? Put some cheddar cheese. I got some, I got some cheddar cheese to throw in there. I got a big block of, it said sharp cheddar. It's not that sharp. It's like a it's like a very lightly sharp cheddar, but I got a big block of it. But it's great for cooking, right? More so than probably uh, than just eating on eating with crackers. So do that. Uh, barbecue sauce is my favorite with fries or just mayo. Oh, I mean, if I got steak fries and you get that mayo and you put the mayo next to the fries so it it, it heats up a little bit. Ooh, that's good. That's real, real good. Yeah, I always buy like extra sharp cheddar and it's just basic cheddar. Yeah, I mean, if you're buying, look, if you're buying a big, if you're buying cheddar cheese on sale, it's not going to be that sharp. You got to go, you got to get, you know, it's got to have a little bit of a rind to it before it gets really good, you know, or you're getting extra, extra sharp or something like that. But thanks everybody for being here tonight. Um, Two weeks ago when I did my first cooking stream, I did not have plans to do this tonight. Did not at all. But, um, and in fact, I prepped a lot for that stream and didn't have obviously as much time to do this one. But I had such a good time two weeks ago and the response was so positive 
that it, it just made sense for me to do it again. And it's not super hard. Uh, this is not definitely not a thing I can do uh, when my folks get back because I'm in the kitchen and it is a pretty open uh, area here. Uh, and then I'm just from 9 p.m. to whenever taking over the house. Whereas if I'm in my bedroom streaming, uh, I'm not in the, I'm not, I'm not a problem. So, uh, so yeah, so that's basically how I'm feeling about that. Uh, this will pro this will be the last one for now anyway, but we never know. You never know what the situation might, may change and what may happen in the future. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I'm going to assume this is going to be the last of the, uh, prepare with bear streams, but I've had a great time doing this. So and thanks for everybody for being here and doing all that. Uh, yeah, so I had less time to prep for this, but I was really excited to get in and get, uh, some food cooked. And also my meatloaf recipe, like I'm proud of it. I think it's fantastic. So I'm happy to share it with people. All right. We got a couple more balls here. So, hmm. Do I want to get this dirty? Yes, I do not mind. I'm going to get this a little more dirty. And I'm okay with I'm okay with cleaning up the graham cracker bin to get more graham crackers. That's way too many much graham cracker crumbs. I have a whole other jar of this. I just have to clean that up later. That's okay. I'm fine with that. I should have put more down than I did. Let's get a little more graham crackers on there. And we'll put that there. There. Our bowl, our, our fun, fun balls here. No bake. A no bake dessert. I'm happy to do that now and again. All right. So we'll get our hands together here. Get our balls together. I will have to wash my hands after this. Obviously, the paper towel is not going to help this. But I knew that was coming, which is why I didn't use my hands for the, uh, for our other, uh, for our meatloaf. All right. Put that together there. But yeah, um, hey, let me ask you folks, this would be a good, this would be good for the chat. Um, if you, if you were going to do this, if you were like, okay, well, it's my turn to do, uh, to, to have a cooking show or a cooking stream, what would be your thing? What would be the thing that you were like, I can't wait to show people this or, or, or like outside of streaming. If you, in, in a world where you can have company over when, remember when that was a thing, what's your thing where it's just like. You know, this is a thing that I make that I think is great, and I want people. My, I got a friend coming over. I'm gonna make a thing. Like, what is what is your thing? I am interested to know. Uh, a recipe I tried once that wasn't my own, just something I found online, was bacon and cheese muffins. They were good. Ooh, bacon and cheese muffins do sound good. That sounds real, real good. I like the sound of that. That sounds great to tea. But yeah, let me know, folks, if there's anything else out there that you're like, this is my thing. This is what I make. Urgh. My hands are very sticky right now. As you could probably tell. All right. Get this together here. Get some graham crackers on this peanut butter. Scoop up some of this. Try to get a ball formed here. But yeah, um, I don't know what else I would do if I was going to do another stream. Um, I guess I would probably do like a, I would probably like make a pasta sauce, like a marinara. Because um, I have done that before and enjoy doing it. Maybe I'd make a chili. Maybe I'd make my four meat chili. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I think I think that might be something I could make. Like, you know, try to try to do something within the confines of the stream here is tough. This is not coming together. This ball, this ball is just falling apart. Uh, I don't use a recipe, but I make broccoli burger stuff. The hamburger with broccoli, cream cheese, cheddar, and spices, and baked in a casserole until cheese is bubbly. That sounds rad, Julie. Uh, chicken thighs and sliced potatoes. I bake chicken on a rack of both potatoes in the oven. Ooh, so the drippings hit the potatoes? Damn, okay. Uh, maybe, or they're just above it and just cooked in the same thing. Probably my family's baked pineapple recipe, I guess. I don't think I would be real long stream, though. I hear you. Uh, miso chicken or my mother-in-law's Chinese noodle stir fry. Oh, a stir fry could be good. Yeah, they get the drippings. It's perfect. Yeah, that sounds awesome. 
this last ball is just not coming together. I don't know if it was too much graham cracker or not enough graham cracker, but I, I'm, I'm going to call it quits. All right. So that sounds awesome. All right. So I have some peanut butter and graham cracker left in here. Uh, I got a couple balls left. I'm going to put the balls in there. I'm going to put this in the fridge to let it kind of solidify. But first, uh, you're going to uh, just look at this mess while I wash my hands. Uh, luckily, my mic cable uh, and my headphone cable is long enough that I can get to the fridge from here, which is awesome. And uh, just so you know, this feels gross. Just this peanut butter coming off of my hands as water pours on it is a feeling I don't enjoy. But it's necessary to get the desired outcome, which is cleaner hands. Oh, I'm going to have clean hands in a second. Oh, that's awesome. Just getting that off there. I'm gonna, my fingernails are going to smell like peanut butter the rest of this evening. Guarantee. And then just hit that there. All right. I'm back. I'm coming back. Coming back, everybody. Uh, delicious mess, indeed. Probably dump the crumbs in the PB bowl to make one last ball. Yeah, I'm probably going to just dump the, the graham crackers right in there. Because here's the thing. This, all these graham crackers, they're not going back in the container. They're, they've got peanut butter on them and chocolate chips, possibly. So that's, all this is going to go here in the bowl. And then I'll just clean up as I go. And we're just doing some cleanup right now. Um, cause what I'll probably end up doing is, you know, I'm going to put this in the fridge together because we'll, we don't clean up after. I'm going to put all this in the fridge here and then, uh, see if I can make something out of it later. But I also might just hit this with a spoon tonight because I'll be eating a little of this meatloaf, but really when this stream is done, I'm just going to be eating peanut butter balls. Uh, cause I've just given up on saying bites. I said balls so many times on stream. It's okay. Also, a dessert item go, I'll have to go with no bake cookies because I enjoy making them. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No bake cookies are great. Uh, as I said, you can make microwave peanut butter bars and I almost made microwave peanut butter bars because I enjoy microwave peanut butter bars. But I didn't make those. I went with the this recipe instead. Because um, I had butter and I had peanut butter. And I had chips. And I, and I forget the extra ingredients. I haven't looked at it in a while. All right. We'll clean up our workspace. You clean as you go. Make my life a little easier as I'm uploading this archive to YouTube after the stream is over. And here. Go there. All right, I'm going to put this butter back in the fridge because that'll be better for the butter. Okay, so we got here. I've never made a mug cape, uh, cake, cape. I've never made a mud, I'm uh, sorry, a mug cape. I would like to do that someday. But I've heard very good things, I just haven't done it. I have a little water here. Give me a second. Uh, yeah, I just never done it. I should give that a shot one of these days. Oh, got peanut butter over here. Okay. So, let's see our timer. Mm. Sorry. Do 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 do. Um Wait. Okay, good. I was like it didn't show up and I was like, "Oh no. We have 24 minutes left." to do that. So I'm going to take a quick peek in the oven. I don't have a cam for that. Uh, Harold, you have a great night. And yes, I would love to catch you tomorrow. All right. That's going in there, doing its thing. Um, bacon, doing it, doing, doing what it does. Uh, we have, we have 20 minutes left, 24 minutes left. So, uh, let's go, go to this camera here. All right, I'm gonna check my, gonna check my notifications. All right, cool. Uh, everything's looking good there. All right. Um, yeah. So unfortunately, I have uh, uh, some time to spare because uh, 
That's just the nature of the beast. Um, did I miss the whole cooking? Uh, no. Uh, well, you missed all the preparation. Right now, I have a meatloaf in the oven, and I have made uh, and uh, I've made our dessert, which are these peanut butter balls, which are peanut butter bites, peanut butter balls, whatever. Peanut butter, chocolate chips, and graham crackers just rolled together. Uh, coal, the chi we chilled uh, that, and this is the leftovers from that. Um, but you missed a lot of the stream, and that's okay. Thank you for being here. Right now in our oven is our uh, our wonderful recipe. So I will take this opportunity here. Uh, we got our meatloaf in there uh, to remind you all of the ingredients and our cooking. We'll go through that. Um, Pat's meatloaf. Here is how you make Pat's meatloaf. You take a pound of ground, ground beef. Uh, you get yourself a big bowl to mix all this together. Three quarters of a cup of breadcrumbs. It's going to look like a lot because they're breadcrumbs. Uh, three quarters of a cup of ketchup. Half a, half a cup of ketchup is going into the mix. A quarter cup is going to be used later. Um, one half cup Parmesan cheese. One half cup of diced onion, which we diced at the beginning of the stream. Talked about cooking technique there, or dicing technique. One tablespoon steak sauce. One teaspoon jarred minced garlic. One teaspoon Italian seasoning three quarters of a teaspoon of pepper, half a teaspoon of salt, half a cup of diced bacon. The diced bacon and the uh, remaining ketchup went on top of our uh, of our meatloaf. Um, I used steak sauce instead of Worcestershire sauce. Um, I used regular breadcrumbs instead of panko, although mine were not technically regular, they were Italian, so I used a little less Italian seasoning. Uh, I used egg beaters instead of one large egg, so I did one quarter of a cup of, e of egg beaters, or just one egg. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, uh, since I used jarred minced garlic, if you're going to use fresh garlic, use double the amount, because jarred mince goes a long way. Um, and if you're using garlic powder, I would say teaspoon garlic powder, and maybe don't use all the Italian seasoning. That's what I'd say for that. Um, mentioned, put in more Parmesan if you want. That was freshly diced Parmesan, uh, diced, or, uh, uh, freshly, um, uh, uh, yeah, uh, grated Parmesan from, like, three days ago. So, pretty fresh. Uh, we have a 350-degree oven that we preheated, and right now it is in, um, the upper rack baking from 45 to 55 minutes. Uh, we are at... We have some time left. Yeah, we have 20 minutes left on that before we'll take a look at it. Uh, and the other thing is that I put it, uh, it's in a, uh, it's in its dish, uh, which is a, uh, it's not glass, but it's like glass. I forget the name of it. I apologize for that. Um, but it is on a cooking sheet uh, in case there are any drippings or grease starts rising to the top and goes over, it doesn't go into the oven. I think you have to clean your oven. Instead, you just have to clean another pan. And that's fine because there's so much to clean. And then while we did that, we built, uh, we, we built, we assembled our peanut butter bites, which is uh, just one cup of, uh, of peanut butter. Smooth, if you got it. There's some chunky mixed in because I didn't have a full thing of smooth. Uh, along with half a cup of, of uh, chocolate chips. And then you mix those together in a bowl, and you want to refrigerate that, cover it in saran wrap or whatever, plastic wrap, whatever you got. Put that in the fridge for a little while. Take it out. Lay uh, graham cracker crumbs. This came out of a, bo of, of a, uh, uh, a, a box of it, a container, I should say. Uh, but if you have, you know, if you just have graham crackers, just dice them up yourself. Roll them in your hands. Roll them up in there into balls. Uh, the graham cracker should keep the balls from just all sticking together, but then you're also going to refrigerate these, which we will do. Now, I will put this in the fridge, uh, and, uh, do I have the thing? Yes. Yeah. All right, put that in the fridge, and that is going to just harden up in there. And then I also have this, which I'm just going to eat with a spoon later, and that's going to be really good. Our leftovers. You could probably get this into a ball, but I also just might eat some of it now because I do have some water so I just might eat a little of this now just cuz I'm gonna move my mic over there so you don't hear me all of me mm. 
I mean, that's just good. Mm -hmm. That's good. Mm. Mm. That is good. Okay. Thing we can do is we can clean up our graham cracker because I didn't put enough down. Because I goofed. And we'll do that. Last time I did this, I... I do have the gong, Lord Crashington. I made sure that I have the gong and also the apparatus. Uh, also, our soundboard are both here. So, I'll give this a proper cleaning later. But right now, that should be good. Lord Crashington wants me to hit that gong. I will hit that gong in just a second. All right. We hit this here. And now I'm going to hit the gong. Thank you for using your channel points on this gong. <coughs> oh, sorry. That didn't sound great. I'm going to do it again. That was better. He hit my microphone the first time and actually muted it. Uh, yes. Indeed. All right. Well, while we're waiting on our meatloaf, we can do some cleanup. Oh, isn't that fun? Uh, got some leftover onion because we cut up more than, than we needed for our onion. Put that aside. So when you put that in, this you can see this is my trial run on cutting, dicing onions because I didn't want to look foolish on the very first thing I did on stream tonight. So I practiced a little bit of dicing onions beforehand. So now I have, now I have a bunch of diced onion and uh, I know what I'm gonna do with this. I'm gonna take a couple Italian sausage and I'm going to take a pepper that I have in the fridge, a uh, bell pepper that I have in the fridge from a, that was from another recipe. And I will take that and dice it all up together, cook it all up together and cook it in uh, and make myself a sausage and peppers and onions uh, sandwich. And that will most likely be my lunch one day this coming uh, next few days. Also, uh, meatloaf is going to be either dinner or lunch tomorrow. I haven't decided yet. Julie says, I'm so excited to dice onions now that I've seen how it's done. Well, I appreciate that. Just be careful. That's all I can say is be careful. Uh, but that is, that is nice of you to say. Um, Especially on the cut, uh, the first cuts. The first cuts of that onion, just take your time with it and be careful. No, you don't have to go all the way through, especially because you don't want to, because you don't want to cut up that root at the very end. Um, all right, so we got onion. I'm going to put this in the fridge. Hey, you're going in the fridge. Uh, but yeah, uh, I'm going to have meatloaf for lunch or dinner tomorrow. I'm going to wake up tomorrow and decide if I want to, if I'm going to save the meatloaf or if I'm just going to eat it. Uh, and then I'm, yeah, I don't know, because I a meatloaf sandwich sounds fucking rad, but also, if I wait another day, the meatloaf will have congealed even more in the fridge, and will be even better, so I probably don't want to wait, I don't want to have it for lunch tomorrow, I want to have it for dinner tomorrow, and then, like, lunch the next day, uh, that mac and cheese that I had was too much mac and cheese, that, that was, um, the, the amount I made two weeks ago, was an incredible amount. It was a great amount of mac and cheese, but it was definitely too much mac and cheese for one person, me. Uh, eventually, I was just like, I should not have eaten all of this. All right, so we got, oh, we got to hit the trash can with all this stuff here. But yeah, I, I definitely went overboard on the, uh, on the mac and cheese. It took me a while to eat all of it. I should have frozen some of it. I should have frozen some of it, and I didn't. Uh, my vote is to save a slight bit of meatloaf for day two breakfast with egg or two. Ooh, yeah. So, well, on the most part, I don't really eat a lot of breakfast. I eat a lot of stuff at 10 a.m., which sometimes is breakfast and sometimes is lunch. Just kind of depending. Uh, we'll put these in here. Let these soak a little bit. I got peanut butter and breadcrumbs. So they're going to have to go down the garbage disposal. That steak sauce is in there. I wish that I wish that I'd had Worcestershire sauce. That would have been great, but I don't have it. So we're just, you know, we're just doing a little cleanup. You're going to, you know, hear me move over to the sink, get things ready. I also should have put away the dishes that I did today that are sitting in there in the sink. I did not put those dishes away. I should have. It'll just make my life easier when it's time to do, to wash all this. Uh, especially that glass that has ketchup in it because I didn't want to. This is the thing. I wanted to do a bunch of different like bowls and stuff and be fancy like I'm on a cooking show. 
And then I just went and got ketchup out of the fridge and put more ketchup on. I was like, that kind of defeats the purpose of putting ketchup in a nice container. But what are you going to do? Uh, all right. Can I reach the trash can from here? I I can't. I can't but I can pull it towards me. Hooray. And we'll just dump out all this. And get all our trash in. Hooray. And then get this in. Wash our hands off because we just touched the trash can. And all right. I have gotten a bunch of stuff into the uh, sink, which is better than it being here on my tables. So that's good. I got a card table uh, right next to, to everything that is where I kept all my ingredients because I don't have a whole, I don't have as much counter space as I would like. Also, sorry. Some of my counter space is taken up with my computer. I've got a desktop in here and two monitors and webcams and my iPad uh, mini, which has the recipe on it. There's just a lot of tech, you know, a keyboard and all kinds of stuff, a, a ring light. I got all kinds of weird stuff in here. It's an odd thing to have in a kitchen because uh, this kitchen was not designed to do this because it's a kitchen. So it was designed to, you know, to have a bunch of counter space for cooking, but not necessarily for uh, your computer. Fun fact, was not designed for that. All right, let me take my phone over here and see what I got. I've got 12 minutes left. I'm gonna take a quick peek at how this is looking. Oh, that's looking good. It's looking real good. Like and look, ooh, I got the smell when I opened, ooh, the, the ketchup. And a, and a little bit of the steak sauce kind of whiffing in there. Some of the onions cooking. The, of course, the beef. Ooh, that smelled great. Uh, I guess we'll go back to this uh, view here because we have some time. Um, Pat, you need a laptop. Well, so the tea, I have a laptop. It's just that my laptop doesn't like uh, multiple webcams or monitors. Uh, it does not enjoy those things. So I just took my streaming setup in. Um, Basically, having two webcams, uh, if I use the webcam on the laptop and another one, that works fine. But then I would have to angle the monitor to use that webcam. And I was just like, I'm not doing that. But yes, the T. A, a laptop would make this easier. Um, what can I tell you? Uh, I can tell you that our stream tomorrow, uh, we are continuing to work on our uh, Marcosius, there's, there's our Marcosius right there. You can see him right there. Uh, that's a nice lavender model kit. Very, very infrequently do we work on something lavender. Uh, so we will be working on that again tomorrow. We started that. We are one arm done and the head and the chest. The head being the most difficult part because it has really annoying stickers. Uh, but we are working on the other arm and then we'll continue on with that. Uh, that is uh, what our next, that, that's the build I'm currently working on. That's tomorrow at 9 p.m. Eastern. Um, I have been told, uh, beautiful lavender boy, indeed. Uh, I have been told that something from my wish list has been purchased and will hopefully arrive at some point. Um, uh, and that is one of the next things we'll be building. We're going back into Star Trek. We've only done that once. Uh, and work on the Enterprise. I'm very excited about that. I also, uh, am waiting a check. We'll hopefully it will be arriving any day now. Uh, and when it does, I will be purchasing some model kits uh, so that I have more to build because I'm running a little dangerously low on my kits. Uh, but I'm excited to continue. Um, I will be doing uh, Hearthstone next week. We haven't done Hearthstone in a hot minute, so we'll go back to Hearthstone. Uh, March, we will see a return to Pokemon uh, Emerald. Uh and, uh, yeah, I mean, I want to play a few more decks in state. I have a standard deck I really like um, that I would like to play more of uh, before uh, Hearthstone completely changes and every card becomes wild. And they introduce a bunch of new standard cards, which are some of which are just old wild cards. And others are brand new cards. And some of them are just variations of old cards. Uh, just, Hearthstone's going to get weird, y'all. It's going to get weird. So I'm excited to do that. Um do I want to, uh, can I reach that? Uh, no, I can't. I can't reach that thing. Um, oh, got myself. Okay. Ooh, getting that light there. Don't like that. Um, 
I just saw it in the corner of my eye, a weird product I have in the in the cupboard. Instant mashed potatoes is a thing that I've I just never ate and then my mom and dad bought a bunch of groceries before they left, which was very kind to them and I appreciate it. And one of them was these packaged instant mashed potatoes, you just add water. You just add hot water, let it seep, and then stir, and then you get mashed potatoes. And they're not bad. I mean, are they as good as you getting your own mashed your own potatoes, cooking them, par boil, you know, boiling them, slicing them up, mashing them with milk and butter? No, but they're they're fine. Yeah, mashed potatoes are not hard to make. Why would you make instant? Well, it's the tea. It's the whole process of like this does not require me to have milk and butter or cream, or anything like that. All you need is water. So it's convenient. Also, it means that I can have my potatoes as baked potatoes, or I don't have to get potatoes for, for mashed potatoes. So it is, mashed potatoes aren't hard, but this is just like an easy thing, and it's fine. I mean, honestly, it's just so I don't eat my weight in frozen uh, french fries, and I get that. Obviously, they're cooked when I eat them. Uh, instant mashed potatoes are good enough for a normal meal. Yeah. Uh... I'll buy the pre-made mashed potatoes. Yeah, you can also just buy a thing at your grocery store of that, uh, which reminds me, I have to get a grocery list together. Uh, at the end of the week, I'm running a little low on some necessities. Not a lot of necessities, but a few necessities. I am almost out of pasta, and obviously making a lot of making pasta is an easy thing for me to do. So we are just uh, we are still hanging out here, waiting on our. Um, uh, yeah, we got about seven minutes left before we're going to pull out our meatloaf. I want to give it plenty of time to cook. Uh, obviously, I'm not obviously. I'm going to let it set and reheat, but I am going to like cut into it. I am going to like uh, just you know use use a uh, using a paring knife here, and I'm just going to you know carve into it a little bit uh, to kind of show you what it looks like and get myself a little bit of a taste. Um, but. Uh, but I do want to do that. Wait for that before we get into that. But yeah, so I got model kit building. Excited about that. Like I said, gonna get into some uh, Hearthstone and some Pokemon Emerald randomizer. Uh, I'm always looking for new things that are inexpensive or free to play, uh, cheap, free, or uh, you know, or gifted to me uh, to play on my Wednesday bonus streams. Uh, this will be the last of the cooking streams. Uh, my folks will be returning in a couple weeks, but I'm definitely done doing this. Uh, I was happy to get a second one in. This has been something I want to do for a while. I am constantly thinking about other things to do on Wednesdays. At the end of uh, uh, of uh, March, I will do a Pat Bears Anime Club, and I will do a wrap-up of this season of anime. There's a lot of good anime in winter 2021, so I'll do a wrap-up for that. You can always guarantee on that. Uh, but yeah, we're still hanging out here. Um... But, uh, you know, right now we're just waiting for the meatloaf to be done so that we can ooh and ah at Pat's famous meatloaf. Uh, very excited about that. Um, and, yeah, uh, I think, yeah, I think that'll be coming. Uh, a live Pat Bears Anime Club um, will be on the docket in March. i got to figure out the whole schedule. I will have something up for my $3, $5, and $10 patrons to vote on because uh, that's always good. Uh we are towards the end of February. A reminder, if you want to join my Patreon, you're more than welcome to. If you want to be a subscriber, I haven't said that tonight. Thanks to everybody. Uh, you know, we had last book renew their subscription. Um, but uh, thanks to everybody who's a subscriber. If you're not a subscriber, consider becoming one. Uh, I do weird Wednesday streams, not unlike this. I, I have thought about trying to branch out a little bit. Um, uh, I don't know if I'm going to do like woodworking or anything like that, but I am, I am considering other Wednesday streams that are not just video games, but are different things that I can do in the bedroom that I have, uh, normally stream right now. I am not in a bedroom. I am in the Carolina room, the bonus room. Whoa. And speaking of which crazy, like Fox just subscribed for 19 months. Uh, instead of speakers, I have stuff going to my headphones because I didn't want to bring my speakers in here. So I didn't even notice. So that, uh, when, when the, uh, alert comes in, it is loud for me, but thank you so much. I'm going to hit the applause there. Let's throw the barricade Lego site the moat in the chat. Thank you so much. Crazy like Fox for renewing your subscription it means a lot to me. I appreciate it. Uh, thanks for your continued support. Um, 
but yeah, I, I, you know, I, I've been thinking about other Wednesday streams. And if you have ideas, feel free to let me know. Um, I take a lot of, um, uh, a, a lot of my kind of style of the stream and what it constitutes doing uh, model kit building and building in general. And what I get away with here, you know. I could, instead of doing a cooking stream on a Wednesday, this could just be something I did on Monday or Thursday or a Saturday, because it's just like, ah, oh, build with bear. We're building food, whatever. Uh, it's not that big a stretch, but uh, I have taken a lot of inspiration from Tinker Taylor Solder Fry, which is a show on the uh, Loading Ready Run streaming network uh, done uh, by my friend Ian. And uh, I've taken just a, he calls it a Let's Try program, which I love the the idea of that because it's like oh well uh yeah ian horner is wonderful uh but ian you know like successfully modded a steering wheel a uh, a video game steering wheel uh to put a real wheel on it and then the buttons that should have been on the steering wheel ended up on this other device and he did a great job and did everything he needed to do but also he spent weeks and weeks or uh, streams and streams working on modding a dreamcast and it never worked uh, but because it, it's a tribe program, and I have a lot of respect for for that and for what he does uh, in that regard. Uh, but that has definitely been an encouragement. Uh, he's done some cooking streams, and I've taken a lot of inspiration from that. Um, the biggest inspiration of this stream uh, is uh, actually just Austin Walker doing a bit at Giant Bomb, uh, as if uh, a world where everyone had YouTube channel and YouTube stuff and his was uh, a Gunpla building and that my immediate like uh, DM to him like as soon as I saw it was hey we should definitely do uh, Austin's build club on Giant Bomb uh, please 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 let's do that and we were like yeah 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 and then we never did but since then I, I have done building with Dan Record when he was still Giant Bomb and with Austin uh, and, and then later Danielle doing Lego with Danielle um on Waypoint streams. So I have lived that dream, but the dream was to guest on Giant Bomb uh, with Austin and do model kit building and like talk about the hobby and how to get into it. Um, and that was something we always thought we would want to do. We ended up, there's two things we want to do. It was that, and it was doing uh, and having uh, uh, be a, Austin be a GM. And we did that. Um, so I'm very happy that was involved at least for a few years with, with the, with those uh, Christmas time podcasts, but uh, been watching old UPFs and I'm close to chicken fries episode. <laughs> Hell yeah, um, yeah. No, that was always a, the the thing that I wanted to do was I wanted to build model kits with Austin. Uh, any excuse. We did that. Uh, basically, it was like, hey, if we hit this milestone in donations, because it was part of a donation drive. Um, a charity stream, then Austin and I are going to build some model kits. And then we hit it like immediately because I was like, of course we will. Um, I was really happy to be able to do that. Uh, and then the year later, I came back and we uh, we just they had some of the uh, the Lego from Overwatch and put that together. And I was like, that's fun. We'll just hang out and talk about Lego and such. Uh, I do wish Ben and Jan's build streams took off. Yeah, I mean, like. That's the other thing. I, I mean, Jan is somebody, Jan doing uh, some model kit stuff when they were like, well, we're just going to constantly be live streaming. Uh, ooh, my alarm went off. The chimes are going. Uh, so I'm going to hit stop on there. Uh, so we'll, we'll take a look at what we got in here in just a moment. I'm going to let this, I'm going to give it a couple more minutes. So I did 45 minutes. It's 45 to 50 55 depending on your oven so we are going to give this another minute or two but i'll take a i'll take a crack at it now if i was going to serve this right away i would hit 55 take it out let it sit on the on the uh, oven for a while i'm not going to eat much of this tonight this is going to be i'm going to be hitting the room temperature letting cool down transferring letting congeal transferring it into tupperware putting that in the fridge uh so that can congeal even more um and it's going to be excellent but yeah i um I mean, I would love to, to do all this stuff. The thing I would, honestly, the show I really want to do more than anything, um, uh, and maybe in the future times could do that, is I just want to hang out with Vinny and do, like, like build something. Like, I want to, like, tackle an arcade cabinet 
or something. I just hang out and be like, I don't know about that. Oh, that sounds good. Oh, okay. Well, you know more than me about that. And just hang out. I mean, it's just Vinnie Caravella. You know, it'd be nice. All right. So I'm going to turn the oven off. So we'll turn the oven off. Uh, Co-build stream with Vinny would be cool. Yeah, that would be fun. Uh, those are things that like I like doing and I always enjoy doing. So we're going to hit main here. Got my knife over there. Uh, all right. So I'm going to get my my uh, oven mitts here. We're going to go with the oven mitts there. Open this up. Uh, what I'm doing right now is my glasses are fogging up because the heat just came out of the oven. I'm going to hit. I'm going to pull the rack out a bit so that I can more easily pull what I need there. I'm going to be putting one mat down here like that. And I'm going to be putting the other. I will be picking up Prilex and placing it there. And then I'm going to take the other rack up. It's going to be very hot. I'm going to put it on the stove to let it cool down. And then closing the oven. And that is our meatloaf. Would I need to see him work on that background wall in a stream. Ooh, that, that looks amazing. Yes. Uh, you get to hang out with Vinny, but it's fixed the sewer basement stream. Yes. Um, smell of vision is not a thing. Uh, we got a little bit of burn here at the top. Maybe, maybe I should have had the rack down a little bit lower, but this burn is very slight, and that is fine. Um, that's what a lot of the ketchup is for, honestly. Uh, yeah, the smell right now is so good. Oh, the smell is so good. So, we'll take our knife. I'm just going to be taking a little bit of, as I said, this is going to get transferred into Tupperware when it cools down anyway. Uh, but yeah, we get a little caramelization, a little crispy. Yeah, that's fine. But, because I'm going to be reheating this. So, sometimes this will get reheated in the microwave. Other times this is going to get reheated uh, in the toaster oven. Uh, depending on what I'm doing. So I'm just going to be taking out a little bit of this. Uh, just a little bit. Because I want this to congeal. Same with the mac and cheese two weeks ago. I want this to, I want all the grease to cool and to harden and to like just come together so that it's just like this little bit of a gel. Uh, so I'm just getting a little corner out. Oh, that's going to be hot and it's going to be good. But I can do that there, and you can get a set. You can get a little look at that. You get some onion in here. We got our uh, bacon, got our meat with our our breading in there. This is hot in my hand, and great. And uh, yeah, there's just a little bit right there. Oh, that looks good. And our cheese. Hmm, it's gonna be so good. And uh, I'm gonna cool this down a little bit. All right, yeah, and then uh, I'll give this a bite, and I'll let you know how this goes. Oh, that's still very hot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is hot. <laughs> Good, though. Mm. Okay, yeah. Oh, that's great. Um... Onion is fantastic. Meat is great. Meat is done. Excellent. It's got a great... The ketchup does exactly what it's supposed to do. It's a binding agent, but it also gives a lot of flavor. Because you get the tomato flavor. Hey, I didn't say this before. You use tomato paste instead of ketchup. If you want to use tomato paste, you could use stewed tomatoes. If you want to make it more of a... Um, if you're going to use stewed tomatoes, you want to don't use the juice, save the juice for other stuff. Just use the stewed tomatoes in the jar. Um, but, uh, but that is, oh, that's good. Like I said, that was hot, but it was very tasty. This is, um, you're just talking about tomato paste. Yeah. Tomato paste is definitely something you use in this instead of ketchup, but that's what I had in the fridge, and it's perfect for this because it's going to add some sugar to it, um, and it's going to add a lot of flavoring, and ketchup is like, ketchup is there to cover the stuff that doesn't have as much flavor as we would like and enhance it, so why not put it in with your ground beef to make 
just meatloaf that just tastes so fucking good that I'm just like, I am proud of myself for that. Damn. Oh, that is good meatloaf. Fuck. Uh, all right, well, get, get my paper towel out again. I'm going to eat just, I'm going to eat a little bit more of it. Just going to cut out a little bit more. Um, maybe I would have used a little less breadcrumbs, but I don't think so. I think when this all comes together and congeals together, that's going to be fine. I can kind of taste it a little bit. Uh, but also because it was a, a ta- it had Italian seasoning in the breadcrumbs, it's going to be a little bit more forward. Yes, a further taste test, indeed. But yeah, so that is our meatloaf there. And the real thing about a meatloaf is, like, you can put gravy on this. I got beef gravy. I can put beef gravy on this. Um, I'm probably just going to put ketchup on it and some cheddar cheese and a sandwich at one point. Uh, when I'm eating this right here, I might put a little ketchup on the side, but I'm probably just going to eat it as is uh, for dinner tomorrow because I think I'm going to do dinner because I want to eat a good portion of this tomorrow. Uh, so I'll do dinner and then lunch the next day. I think that'll be really good. But yeah, I'm just letting this cool a little bit more before I put more of this in my mouth. Uh, but yeah, ooh, this is it's still congealing pretty nice. It's breaking up a little bit. Which is also fine, because if you're going to make it for lunch, you can put it in a sandwich. It doesn't matter if it breaks up. It's, it's going to go in your mouth anyway. But yeah, let me get... Mm-hmm. Mm. Oh, wow, that turned out good. All right, well... Mm. Oh, I got a good crunch on that onion. My personal favorite meatloaf hack, says Bobby, is using ground-up pork rinds Instead of breadcrumbs. Ooh, okay. All right. Okay, Bobby. Yeah, all right. I could get with that. Yeah. Let me get my... These are these are nice and cold, and they are kind of separating them. They're there. Put that there. So we have our Pat Bear's Famous Meatloaf and Peanut Butter Bites ready to go there. Looking fantastic. That's our stream. Thank you all so much for hanging out. We are going to raid because that's what we do here on the uh, on the Prepare with Bear or any other Pat Bear streams. We always raid at the end of every stream. Uh, we'll, we'll share the love. We'll find somebody awesome out in the community to go and give a little love to. So we'll do that. Um, but I'm glad everybody was here. But yeah, like I'm going to pick uh, a cool streamer for us to go and raid. So let me go get on the... Uh, get on the internet here and find somebody for us to go hang out with. Um, but yeah, I'm so glad you were here. I'm this went well, and I'm happy. Uh, I'm, I'm proud. Uh, oh, excuse me, sorry. I'm e- you know eating. I made the mistake. Um, uh, that was a lot of fun. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, I uh, and I'll be here tomorrow night uh, streaming 9 p.m. Eastern. Just looking for uh, somebody to. For us to go and hang out with tonight, who's doing some cool shit? Oh, well, we're gonna go hang out with Jordan. Uh, he's playing Code Vein, which I don't, I don't know what Code Vein is. So we're gonna go check out whatever the fuck Code Vein is. Uh, but Jordan rules, and we're gonna go give Jordan some love. Thanks everybody for being here tonight. I hope you come hang out tomorrow for another episode of the Build a Bear Workshop. Back to Model Kit Building, back into uh, the Carolina room where we are streaming. Um, because this is not the proper place to build a model kit. Uh, I got to turn my kitchen back into a kitchen. I have dishes. The dishes are not done, man. So anyway, we're going to go raid. Thanks for being here. I hope you have a great rest of your evening. Thank you so much for supporting me on this one. Let's go hang out with Jordan as he plays a game I don't know shit about. Have a great night, everybody. Goodbye, 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 goodbye.